Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at capsules. Uh, if you're not familiar with capsules, they're kind of prepackaged um, objects that we can work with outside of the relatively new node editor in Cinema 4D. And the node editor, um, the geometry node editor, similar to working maybe in Houdini or um, the, the nodes that Blender, the geometry nodes that Blender has. And so while we're not going to jump into there, um, we are going to take a look at capsules and see. Um, some of the benefits of working with the node editor and kind of packaging up these types of pre-made objects. Now, I have just some simple geometry here for us to be able to work with. And what we wanna do is open up the asset browser. Now, um, we also wanna make sure we are in the operator section. The nodes section um, is gonna include a whole bunch of other types of objects that we would actually be using if we were in the node layout here and trying to create um, geometry or, or something that way. So we want to be in operators and even in here, there's quite a few things um, we probably don't need or really won't worry about uh, since they, they are meant to be used um, in our kind of geometry node editor there. So um, these capsules aren't necessarily in one place, um, but the big kind of categories or the ones we'll be spending the majority of our time in will be the geometry modifier selection and the geometry selection um, itself. Now modifiers, some of these maybe could be helpful. Um, I haven't found a use for these. I still think the majority of them are for the node editor, but uh, modifier and selection, the majority of these we can use. So what you'll see with these modifiers is often they're very similar to other modeling operations we might have um, or sometimes even deformers. So for instance, we have a chamfer capsule here, um, and that is similar to our, undo that, our bevel deformer, okay? We have delete, dissolve, extrude, okay? All similar uh, to what you might do if you were working with an editable object. And that's kind of um, the idea with a lot of these, is to make modeling more of a procedural thing. Uh, so that you can go back and edit and make changes without having to completely start over or do a whole bunch of undo. So the, the two big ones that aren't really related to um, kind of the common modeling tools you've seen before are going to be dual mesh and greeble. Okay, we will be taking a look at those, but I definitely recommend kind of looking at these, going through them. We do have some interesting ones. Polygon bevel, optimize, melt. So, you know, uh, even though it's a deformer, it's also a capsule, we may have some additional functionality in here. And in the selection um, group of operators here, capsules, um, a lot of the common selection types that we might find from our selection menu can be found here. Um, one of my favorites is random selection, and I'll show you why. So let's kind of do just a basic setup here. Um, I'm going to start by doing random selection and applying that to my cylinder. Okay, now at the moment we really can't see it, uh, but in the input section of our um, remove, and we do want to make these a child of whatever object we want it to work on, um, we can choose the type of selection here. And then from there, what I could do is come up to my geometry modifiers and maybe choose extrude. Okay, that way we'll be able to start to see this. And we can see that it is extruding um, those polygons. Now, oops, that is not the random, that was remove. So let's go ahead and fix that. There we go. Now that's much better. So we can see that we have some selection of polygons being randomly extruded. Okay, and back in our random selection, we do have a seed to just kind of randomize what it is, as well as the chance. So whether we want there to be a fewer polygons randomly selected or more, okay? And then the extrude, a lot of the common extrude settings. So whether that's offset, whether it's variation, um, we definitely have some interesting controls in here that can be useful for creating uh, and adding detail very quickly, very easily, okay? We could also you know, use islands. So we have some bigger, some smaller, um, and we can add subdivisions as well if we want additional geometry there. Now, what's nice about these capsules is you can stack them together, and all of this is 
procedural. So at any point, if I don't like my random selection, I can come back here, adjust my chance, and it's gonna apply to the extrude. Taking this a step further, I could go back to my modifiers, my geometry modifiers, and find inset. Okay, so I'm gonna apply an inset here. Notice these are being inset, okay? And on, what I could do is actually, let's try another random selection. So random selection inset. So now we can see only certain polygons are being inset. Um, though honestly, I'm not sure I like that since, well, no, that's fine, um, like that. But we could then come in here and extrude again. And actually what we're kind of doing here is almost building uh, a bevel. I'm sorry, not a bevel, a greeble. So uh, I mentioned that earlier and we'll see that um, right now. But you can see we've stacked a number of these capsules together uh, and we can come in at any point and make adjustments to them. Okay, whether it's inset, amount of inset, right? The random selection again, more, less. So very procedural approach. And I'm still working with a primitive cylinder here. Okay, so I could always come back in and make changes to its setting. Height, height segments. Okay. So really nice way of kind of detailing out some geometry uh, quickly and easily. Now, like I said, that's pretty much what um, we would do with a Greeble. So let's take a look at Greeble since it is another one of those really useful um, capsules there. And so Greeble's very much like what we saw and we're just doing, but all in one. Um, so you can increase the iterations. So you can see it's Greebling more, but Greeble is going to randomly inset, extrude, um, different polygons. So the more polygons you have, the more it will greeble. And I will say this isn't the best greeble I've ever worked with, but with some changes, it can turn out quite interesting. We can do some initial subdivisions there, adjust the scale of these, all right? Work with the threshold, all right? I like that. Work with the minimum extrusions, maximum extrusions, pull out the maximum a little. Um, and adjust the taper, which honestly I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I don't really like what it's doing in some of those corners. Increase the number of iterations, perhaps. Subdivisions, maybe turn down the extrude a little bit. Um, but you can see, once again, pretty quickly, pretty easily, we're able to kind of detail out geometry and get some really interesting shapes. Uh, that might take a long time to do otherwise. So it's really nice that we can do this with these capsules. And once again, that it's all procedural. Uh, now, the last one I want to take a look at is um, the dual mesh. Okay. And if I can drop this on the sphere. You've probably seen geometry created like this before. Um, and so it's taking our geometry, our lines, and, you know, creating some interesting shapes from them. So turning off dual mesh, you can see how it subdivides it again. We can adjust the offset, being extruded, the inset as well. Definitely add some variation here. Um, and we want to subdivide this and make it smooth. So you can kind of get some really interesting um, shapes using those. Now, I find with the dual mesh that the the base geometry matters. So I have a really kind of squared off sphere, um, except for obviously the holes. Um, but watch what happens as we change our type here. Okay, obviously hemisphere, not a whole lot, but tetrahedron gives us a different shape. Hexahedron does as well. So you can get different looks by changing the underlying geometry with it. Icosahedron, to me that looks kind of the most organic because I'm not seeing the additional uh, subdivisions here. So let's see it. We've already cranked up the um, variation a bit. I wish there was maybe a way to um, vary the size more here, but you can see what um, we can do with this. And like I said, create some really interesting shapes. We could drop another sphere in there, um, not to be uh, to get it applied, but just so. Maybe those quite, 
those aren't quite as deep. Um, and yeah, we can get something like that. So that kind of looks alien, weird. And we could, you know, group this together uh, and apply some other deformers to this as well. Okay, so capsules don't have to be the, the only thing you use here. Um, I could come in with, say, a displacer uh, and the shading, add a noise. And we can see now we're really starting to, to push this probably a bit too far. Um, so let's see, that would be in the object section here. I can turn down the strength. But yeah, we're able to kind of vary the shape just a bit uh, and maybe. We could come in here and smooth this. Now, maybe I would want to smooth using um, one of our capsules again. So the possibilities here really are endless. Is probably going to break it, but we shall see. Um, or free Cinema 4D, one of the two. Um, but yeah, there's so many different combinations and ways you can use this, um, especially uh, when you get into more of the selection, storing selections and passing selections um, between, you know, the different um, geometry modifiers we have there. So that will do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see and take care.